by now. I'm hoping you have watched the other videos about what is a fraction and um, comparing fractions so that you have a firm foundation on how to begin adding fractions. The first example I want to give you is to show you the logic behind the procedure. I have seen people add 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 when they're adding fourths. Fine. They get 4. Makes sense. You've got 4 pieces. But, but what are these pieces? They're not sixteenths. And they add straight across thinking, well, I added the numerator. I guess I add the denominator. Possibly confusing with multiplication, because when you multiply, you multiply straight across the numerator, then you multiply straight across the denominators, and you get a total. But that doesn't work with addition, as you can easily see, 4 sixteenths, if you divide the numerator and the denominator by 4, you end up with 1 fourth. And obviously, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth and 1 more fourth don't add up to 1 fourth. And that's why, with a little logic, you can see that it doesn't make sense to add denominators ever. So here's another example where you have two fourths. One fourth and one fourth makes two fourths. You wouldn't add them together and say, oh, you have two eighths. No, you, you don't have any eighths here. You have two fourths. That concept of adding things that match, counting things that match, count, uh, that goes all the way through algebra. You have to have things that match to add them together. You can't add three buses and two frogs and say that equals five frogs. It doesn't work. So what you do is you add the pieces. You count the pieces. You have one-fourth and another fourth, which is two-fourths. Divide the numerator and the denominator by two, since they're both even, and you get one half. Clearly, one fourth and another fourth is a half. Makes sense. But when the denominators don't match, you've got this buses and frogs thing, you can't just count the pieces and say I've got three of something here. So what we do is we use the idea of equivalent fractions. So we have um, two sevenths here. And we're going to add that together with one fourth. And when we were trying to compare fractions, we got equivalents where the denominators matched. And we do the exact same thing for adding. So what always works is you can multiply your two denominators and get 28s in this case. And then your pieces will match, and you can, you can easily add those. 28s, by the way, is the smallest denominator that will match with 7s and 4s. And the reason I know that is because I can't divide 7 by anything but 1 in, itso in itself. So I can't divide 4 by 7. There's no common factor between 7 and 4. Therefore, the only, the smallest common denominator is 7 times 4. Now what we did to get the 28 for the 7 was we multiplied by 4. And what we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. We can't just say 28, uh, 2 over 28. I've seen kids do that. They just put 2 over the 28. They just put it there. Well, 2 sevenths clearly is not the same as 2 28s. So you can see why it's okay to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, because really you're just multiplying by 1. Multiplying anything by 1 doesn't change it. So the value of 2 sevenths is the same value as 8 28 And the 4 we multiplied by 7, so we have to do the same to the numerator, and we get 7 28 which is equivalent to 1 fourth. Grand total, then, is 15 28 15 and 28 have no common divisors, no common factors, so that is our simplified form, and we're done you have a common denominator, the beauty of it is you don't really have to worry about it anymore. If you have all eights, then you know that your answer is going to be so many eights. So really, all you're concerned about from that point is the numerator. You only need to worry about the numerators. So 1 and 3 make 4, take away 4, you get a 0. 
7 plus 6 is 13. So your answer is 13 eighths. Now let's go on to some other examples here. I took these off a worksheet. We we're adding fourths. So if you're counting fourths, you should have fourths for your answer. That's um, 12 fourths. Now, typically, they want you to simplify, and we can see that 12 is divisible by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Over here, if you take 1 seventh away from 8 sevenths, you're left with 7 sevenths, which is 1. But when the denominators match, that's when we have to say, all right, we're going to have to make a match. And there are no common factors between 7 and 2, so you're just going to have to use 14. That's as small as you're going to go. But then you ask yourself, how did I get from 7 to 14? Well, I multiplied by 2. So I have to do the same to the numerator. 24. For a half, what did I do to get to 14? Well, I multiplied by 7. And I have to do the same to the numerator. Again, I want to stress, you cannot just say 12 fourteenths is the same as 12 sevenths. If you think about that, that doesn't make any sense at all. You have to do the same thing to the numerator as you do to the denominator, and that works because then you have 2 over 2, you're multiplying by 1. Multiplying by 1 does not change the value, it just changes the way it looks. So the total of 24 fourteenths and 7 fourteenths is 31 fourteenths. Since your numerator is larger than your denominator, we call this improper, it's more than one. You could turn that into a mixed fraction, but that's another video. Let's look at this one. Now, we could go to 30 seconds, because 8 times 4 is 32. We could do that. However, at this stage, I really need you to start thinking in terms of the smallest common denominator, because in algebra, you're going to be working with letters, not numbers, and you can't just multiply things. You'll get humongous terms that are impossible to work with. You need to be able to say, okay, what's the smallest number? I can divide by 8 and also divide by 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. They match just if I, I do that. I don't have to do anything to this fraction. 2 times 4 is 8. That's the smallest. And what I did to the denominator, I could do to the numerator. And the 9, well, that's already 8. So we don't have to change the 9 at all. In that case, we have 5 8. And there's nothing I can do to simplify that. Okay, in, in this case, too, you're not going to go with 12s too large, and you need to be able to recognize that there's something smaller here, and that is we could multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3, and the 1 sixth does not need to be changed, and we get 8 sixths. Here we could just multiply by a 7 and get 14, so we have negative 7 fourteenths minus 13 fourteenths. Oh, it's all minus, all in the negative pile. That makes 20, negative 20 fourteenths. Since the numerator and the denominator are both even, we know that we can divide out a 2. And it's important to do that. Some standardized tests will give you that number, and it's not the right choice. You lose all the points for that problem if you don't simplify it and get the right choice.